but um, um, at the number two reactor of Fukushima number one nuclear power station, it, it's possible that all the fuel rods are exposed. Could you elaborate and explain what this means? Yes, well, um, well, yes, um, first of all, the well, um, we have um, this control rod inserted, meaning that it is not being active. Uh, but uh, there is uh, still a lot of heat. Uh, you need to cool down because of the fuel rods inside. And, um, of course, uh, various um, emergency me measures are being taken to try to cool down uh, the fuel. Uh, but uh, there was a need for power source um, in order to run these systems, either from outside or uh, the uh, diesel uh, generators. Um, so these uh, power sources uh, were in place. Uh, but um, they all failed, and uh, that is uh, the s situation so far. And uh, so uh, the cooling system uh, uses electric power, but aside from that, uh, there is a vapor uh, generated. So using the vapor uh, within uh, the um, uh, s storage container, they tried to cool down uh, the fuel rods. Um, that was the mechanism that was being incorporated, but this was not sufficient um, to cool down the fuel. So this is the stage that we're in right now, and uh, that being the case, uh, the water level is uh, starting to come down, yes, and uh, the fuel rods uh, will be exposed. Um, well, the fuel rods are about uh, four meters high. So the height is about four meters, these rods, yes. And um, a large part of these rods are being exposed right now. Um, according to the information we have, uh, according to TEPCO, uh, these fuel rods um, could be exposed, and uh, but and they also say that there is a possibility of meltdown of the core. Um, yes, um, well, inside um, there are the radioactive materials, a large amount of radioactive materials, and um, so uh, they, they, these are releasing heat, and this heat um, is, um, um, ha well, they're using zirconium uh, for the cover of these rods, uh, but um, uh, this material is being melted down, and the fuel rods themselves um, could be melting down. There is that possibility. Um, yes, we just received more information. According to Menti, um, it says that, um, well, the pump to inject uh, seawater inside is not functioning properly, and uh, therefore um, uh, this uh, problem is occurring. This is according to the Nuclear Industrial Safety Agency. So they were trying to use uh, the seawater in this, and this uh, was uh, the system, well, well uh, the pump that uh, used to inject the seawater is not functioning, well, this is a state of emergency. So, in order to cool down these fuels within the pressure vessel, uh, they have decided to inject seawater. And by introducing this water, they were planning uh, to try to reduce the temperature of these fuel rods. And this was the attempt that was being made. Uh, well, according to TEPCO, at uh, the Fukushima number 1 a nuclear power plant at the number 2 uh, reactor, um, they have started to inject of seawater at 6.20 p.m., but they were not able to confirm that the seawater was going in, and uh, it, there is possibility that the fuel rods are all being exposed, and they say that they cannot totally rule out the possibility of a meltdown of the core. Now, if this were to continue, what would happen? Well, um, if um, the fuel were to be totally exposed, and this uh, could, state were to be continued for quite some time, and then the fuel overall uh, will melt down. Um, that is a possibility um, that we could anticipate. So uh, that is uh, the meltdown, the core meltdown that we are referring to, yes. That is a very dangerous state, is it not? Yes. It could be that this core and um, the uh, the pressure vessel, which is containing, uh, well, it's about uh, 15 meters thick, and um, it is, um, so this container, this vessel, uh, could also be damaged as a result of this. Uh, that could happen. And now, if that were to happen, uh, of course, uh, preventive measures are being called for, but what measures could be taken. Well, I think will be key is the cooling method that is to be adopted. Well, whether or not to inject more seawater, well, that is one thing that, that needs to be done. And in, in addition to that, uh, uh, this, um, uh, the container vessel, uh, this, um, the this um, container, this vessel that we're referring to, how uh, to try to maintain uh, this container intact uh, will be key. And for that, what needs to be done? 
Well, uh, first of all, um, this uh, container vessel, uh, the pressure in, uh, inside, if the pressure were to increase, um, then uh, this would mean that, well, uh, if the temperature goes up, there's a possibility that the pressure will also go up. So we need to adjust that, first of all, so that uh, the container vessel will be contain the fuel rods. Uh, this needs to be assured. And uh, so we have uh, this valve here. So uh, once there is pressure built up, then this valve will be opened um, so as to release the pressure inside and cool down the temperature inside. That will become a necessity. Well, um, today uh, we have, aside from this number two reactor that we're talking about, the number three reactor also underwent a um, the hydrogen air blast, and also the number one reactor has also experienced this blast, and the building has collapsed. So we have the number one and the number three reactor have this problem, and we have now this uh, problem with the number two reactor. Could it be that the number two reactor also experienced the same um, hydrogen blast as was the case with number one and number three reactors? Well, if we cannot cool down the fuel um, sufficiently, uh, then um, uh, the zirconium, which is the cover of the fuel and also the water vapor uh, could react, and um, so this would generate hydrogen. And um, this hydrogen uh, it will be uh, released, and at the building, it will react with the oxygen. And so there's this outside building, and um, there, it will react with the oxygen there, and um, this will combine the hydrogen and oxygen, and this could result in a blast and blow off the ceiling of the building. Well, this is actually what happened for the number one as well as the number three reactor. And um, likewise for number two, um, there is a possibility a similar thing would occur. Um, so within the building, um, we have to avoid this situation where the hydrogen builds up inside. And this is something that needs to be done in order to avoid this explosion from happening. That will be a measure that needs to be taken. So TEPCO, this means there's uh, an earthquake. Um, is uh, try to release. There's no problem. Uh, the, At eight uh, o'clock, six minutes, um, there was yes, an earthquake. Uh, well, uh, Four point six if magnitude. Had it been that they could have done that earlier, uh, they would have been better. But uh, because there is a likelihood, um, uh, because uh, there is radioactive uh, materials inside, um, uh, it could release uh, such materials outside. So they have to be careful about that. Well, the number three reactor. Uh, what is the likelihood that it could enter into a safe state? Well, first of all. Um, the, uh, well, first they have to inject uh, seawater inside. I think uh, that would be the best way to try to ensure safety so as to cool down. And uh, this is a number two reactor. And also, uh, the, well, the, uh, there need, is a need uh, for the pressure vessel to contain the radioactive materials inside. And uh, by cooling, continue to cool uh, the fuel, uh, then, uh, well, um, you can prevent boiling from occurring. So you have to cool it down to the temperature level where no boiling will take place. Um, so that is uh, something that it needs to be done. Uh, normally, under normal pressure, it will be have 100 degrees or less. Uh, that is the temperature at which you have to try to cool down these fill rods. 